Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge. My name is Pastor Mike Garcia. If you completed Hag Hamatzah, congratulations. The Lord blesses you and blessed you. We have the next festival, um, Shavuot, coming up. But before we start teaching about Shavuot, which you might know as Pentecost in the, in the Greek or English, 50, uh, I had a question the other day uh, to myself. The question was, why the third day? Why the third day? Why did the Lord, out of all the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Ezekiel, why Jonah? So I would like to take uh, this episode, or maybe the next episode also, or this weekend, and uh, talk about Jonah and, and uh, actually go through Jonah. It's a short book, so if you bear with me and see the similarities between Jonah and Yeshua. Okay? So let's go to uh, Jonah chapter 1, uh, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now if you look at the beginning of verse 2, it says, Arise. Arise. Representing the resurrection. Now the first time we see that, Okay, it's in the Torah when it says, let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. We've talked for the last maybe eight weeks about Romans chapter 6, about the crucifixion, that our flesh would be crucified, and also that we would be resurrected through the power of God. So it's powerful. When God says, arise, when he said to the, to the people that were maimed and crippled, Arise, throw away your, your staff, throw away your, your uh, walking instruments. Arise. Now this time, uh, I'm in Los Angeles, California. You always hear about politics and churches wanting to get involved in politics and whatnot. And uh, I'm really focused on the Lord. I know there's politics in this land, but when I came to the Lord, I believe I voted for Yeshua. I voted for Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter who's president, who's senator, who's a congressman, who's your mayor or governor. It doesn't matter unless you're serving Yeshua. Because he is what matters. I started reading a book by Mark Twain. It says, The Innocence Abroad. Now, I was interested because I was reading one of Rabbi Kahn's books, and he refers to that book. And Mark Twain, this was written in the 1860s, I believe in the early 1870s, 1860s. It was basically a trip through, the, through Europe. He took a trip through Europe and through the Holy Land. And then, but he also talks about United States. And he was talking about politicians. It's like nothing has changed. It was like it was reporting, reporting in 2021. The ignorance, the thievery, the backstabbing, the freeloading. He was talking about politicians. And, and nothing's really changed from the 1860s to now, as far as politicians. That's why you need to focus on the Lord. Keep your life focused on the Lord. Keep your life focused on the Lord. I'm a facilitator for domestic violence, batterers and victims. And it's a lot of domestic violence is a learned behavior. Well, also, your children will learn your learned behavior of following the Lord. As far as me and my house will serve the Lord. But the children have to see you serve the Lord. It can't just be lip service. You will actually have to walk the walk. And your children will do the same thing. I go 
counted for Yeshua. April 8, 1998. Yesterday was 23 years ago. I've been sober ever since, and I've been serving the Lord ever since. Of course, you have to grow at it, but I've never looked back. You take it one day at a time, and you should grow every single day. If you're not growing, you're going. And you can't, don't have anybody else to blame but yourself. You have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the crucifixion and the resurrection. Everything that God has given us to grow. Think about Moses, think about Abraham, think about Joseph and Jacob. They didn't have the resurrection. They didn't have the miracles of Jesus Christ. They walked through faith. So if you don't walk through faith, walk in faith, and by faith, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Don't blame God. Don't blame the people around you. Because ultimately it is you. Your testing. Your faith or lack of. Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Five. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Again, Arise! Call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. You can't serve the Lord by sleeping. You can't sleepwalk your ministry. You can't sleepwalk serving the Lord. As the Lord was resurrected, we also need to be resurrected unto a new man. If you are. Call on the name of the Lord and you're saved. Okay? <clears throat> then you are to be resurrected. You've activated the spirit man and you are to act resurrected. Live resurrected. Be resurrected. Don't live in the past. Don't live as you did in the past. Because those things, whatever they are in your soul, the hurts, the pains, the Lord took them to the cross, and you should also take them to the cross and crucify your flesh. Hence your soul. Hence your emotions. If you don't, that's on you. That's not the Lord. That's not the people around you. That's you. That's your, your personal walk. And I have too many people complaining about their life and this and that. And uh, quite frankly, all I can tell them is to shut up and bear the cross. Bear the cross as the Lord did. He went to a lamb without the slaughter and he did not open his mouth. If anyone had a chance or an opportunity or a reason to open his mouth, it was Yeshua, who was without sin. So even the people around you know to arise. Let's go back to 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that thy God will think upon us that we perish not. He knew something was up with Jonah. His God was special. Because everybody else went to their own gods. But this guy is laying there at peace. The ship's going up and down and back and forth, to and fro. And he's at peace. He's sleeping. 
And this is what happens when God tells you to do something and you go the other way. A lot of people, it's false peace. A lot of people say, oh, I'm at peace. Of course you're at peace because you're not doing what God told you to do. Well, I only come under attack when I'm at Pastor Mike's church. Of course you're at peace because you're not fighting any demons when you're out of here. You're not in spiritual warfare when you're out of here. If you're not in spiritual warfare, then you're not in the spirit. Because demons attack in the spirit. And if you're not in spiritual warfare, that's on you. And don't confuse your soul with spiritual warfare. Don't confuse your emotions with a battle against demons. A lot of people confuse their own emotions as spiritual warfare, and it's not. They're just fighting their own pride, their own selfishness, their own things that they want in their life. They're not even involved in spiritual warfare yet. They're just dealing with themselves. And they say to people, it's spiritual warfare. They say to me, it's spiritual warfare. And I said, no, it's not. What do you mean it's not, Pastor Mike? I said, you're just struggling with yourself. You're barely learning how to die to the flesh. Of course, a lot of people get offended. But I don't really care. Because they need to seek the Lord's face daily and stop, start to get out of their own emotions and what they want. That's the only way they're going to grow. That's the only way, way they're going to arise and resurrect. What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so, be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Verse 7. And they said, every one to his fellow, come and let us cast lots. Does that sound familiar? They cast lots of the Lord's robe. Where else did they cast lots? In the book of Esther. Lot means per. Lots is uh, plural, is pudim. They cast lots. What did Esther have to do eventually? She had to stand up and fight. She had to go to, to her husband with boldness and say this, this, and this about Haman. She was active. She said, if I perish, I perish. You need to know that you're a warrior of Christ. If you're a warrior for Christ, if you're a warrior, then you die with your boots on. You die fighting. Not surrendering like Jonah wanted to do. There was a boxer back in the 40s, 50s, and 30s. Joe Lewis. I think he held the World Heavyweight Championship for 12 years. Unimaginable. He could knock people out with just his jab. It was great. And he had a saying. You can run, but you can't hide. Eventually, he was going to catch up to you. Same thing with the Lord. You can run, but you can't hide. A lot of people say, Lord, I want to be used. Okay, you're going to be used for this. Where are you? Oh, you're running to your own. You're running away from Nineveh. God's going to lasso you and pull you back. But he can't force you to do what he wants. He'll say, hey, remember, you wanted to help. You wanted to serve me. And you're going to be tormented until you start serving him. And that torment happens right in here. We'll go to it later, but in the book of Numbers, chapter 33, verses 50 to 56. And he says, paraphrasing, you know, the things that you are supposed to do to the enemy, they will be pricks to your eyes and thorns in your side. And what I wanted to do to the enemy, I'm going to do to you. There is not going to be any peace. For warriors of Jesus Christ. He needs you to make a decision. If you want to be a pacifist. Then 
coming with the Lord isn't the way to go. You want to be a pacifist? Just go to hell. But if you want to come to the Lord, you better be ready to fight. Now, what I'm saying probably isn't popular, but it's the truth. Uh, verse 8. No, no. So they cast lots, verse 9, verse 7, at the end of 7. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. So remember, you have casting lots in, in the Gospels with Jesus' robe, in Purim with Esther. 8. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land, and the dry land. Okay. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Eleven. Then said, I'm sorry, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Twelve. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. He's willing not to fight and do, be obedient to the Lord and go to Nineveh, but he's willing to die. Think what difficult a battle that is. He'd rather give up his life than to fight for the Lord, than to be obedient. And I hate to say that that's, that's most of the United States of America church-going people. they rather just cave in than stand up for the Lord. Well, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. It's okay. Let's just keep the peace. Social justice. Let me tell you something. There is no social justice in the Word of God. It's being obedient or don't be obedient. Don't be obedient. It's serving the Lord or don't serve the Lord. There's no in between. If you want to be liked by the world, then you're an enemy of the Lord. It's time to stand up. Stand up for the Lord and he'll stand up for you. Look at Jonah. It's truly amazing. He could give up his life and serve the Lord. Think about that for a second. No, not for a second. Think about that for the rest of your life. It's easier to die than to serve the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Die to the flesh, then you don't have to kill yourself. And you don't have to do that to that extreme. But people don't want to die to the flesh. They don't want to die to their emotions. They don't want to crucify the flesh like Jesus did. Our inheritance is the Torah. Deuteronomy 33, verse 4. Yeshua is our inheritance. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He's our inheritance. And you either accept the crucifixion, we don't accept the crucifixion. Not his crucifixion. Our crucifixion. That we crucify our flesh. And without that, we can never arise. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. You need to let God arise inside of you so the enemy can be scattered. You need to have that resurrection power. It's not about Yeshua. It's not about Jesus. Jesus you know he did that. You know what happened to him. He's calling us to do it now. He's calling for us to stand up against the wiles of the enemy. And the only ones stopping us and in this nation, the United States of America, are the people in the church. I'm not concerned about the people that don't serve the Lord or haven't been baptized. Or have to call on the name of the Lord. I'm not concerned about them. My concern is for the people that say they love God. And they won't stand up for him. They'll fight against Yeshua. Just like Jonah did. They'll fight. To make everybody else happy. But they won't be obedient to the Lord. Let's go back. Jonah chapter 1. Verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea.
sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Verse 14. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not upon his innocent blood. I'm sorry, lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it has pleased thee. And these are people that were not Hebrews, that did not believe in God, but now they are. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee. Now the Lord's hearing them out. They weren't believers before, but guess what? In the midst of a storm, you will believe. When everything's crapping around you, finances, your emotions, your physical, your family, that's when you stand with the Lord. That's when the Lord stands with you. You get your sea legs. Have you ever heard that term? You get your sea legs. That's when you have to stand up and fight. They did. Verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. <laughs> but it was at his request. It was at his request. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And i got to tell you something. I've had people leave the church, threaten to leave the church, act like they wanted to leave the church. And uh, quite frankly, I'm like, well, what are you waiting for? Just leave. Jump off the ship. Go. This may not be a popular message for most people. Okay? But I'm not going to beg people. If they don't want to serve God, get out. Go. Go serve yourself. It might be harsh, but I'll say, go serve the devil. Of course, they say, I'm not going to serve the devil. I'm going to serve the Lord somewhere else. They're only lying to themselves. You've asked God into your life and then you've betrayed yourself against Him. Throw yourself into the ocean. God can find you wherever you're at and He's going to cause torment. So they, verse 15 again, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea and the sea ceased from her raging. 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. As I said before, I wonder why did the Lord choose that? He said, as Jonah was in the fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the, in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. So we saw arise several times in the first chapter. We saw that they cast lots, just like they did for Yeshua's uh, raiment. Jesus, when he was on Gethsemane, and he perspired blood, he knew what he had to go through. Jonah knew what he was going to go through. The difference is Jesus went through it. Jonah went crying, 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 throwing me off the ship. Can you imagine? Throwing me off the ship. I'd rather do that than serve the Lord. People in church, they go back to bad relationships. They'd rather serve the Lord. They go back to drugs and alcohol. They'd rather serve the Lord. It's amazing. Of course they never grow. Three days and three nights and the Lord resurrected. When you come to the Lord, you should start growing in the Lord in three days and three nights. In the book of Romans, let's just go there for a second. In the book of Romans chapter 6, I'm going to fast forward. Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, 
we also should be in the likeness of his resurrection. Well, you should, when after three days you come to the Lord, you should be resurrected and start serving the Lord. Boom, right then. Right now. Okay? Not 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I'll get to it. Three days, if we are to walk as Christ walked, in 1 John chapter 3, then we should walk as he walked. I mean, when he's resurrected, you should be resurrected also. Now, you can't have 20 years of faith in five years or two weeks or whatever, but that should be activated and you should never look back. You should grow every day. We'll continue in the next episode.